Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chappell coming to you live from Hollywood, California, home of Primetime Shopping Network. And tonight is a Wednesday night art show. I got some pretty cool stuff tonight. And right before we went live, Matt was telling me, Matt Jackals, that it is imperative, don't even think twice, that I need to get, what, how did Matt phrase it? A uh, green and tangerine colored mohawk. You really think I'd look that good with a mohawk? What do you think? What do you think, Wilson? No. No mohawk? No mohawk. Why not? Patty's going, no. So that was just Ashley's idea, and you agreed. All right. We'll take that under advisement, Matt. I got some great stuff tonight. Right in front here, it's going to come up in a little bit. You ever want to go to Somalia and break a vending machine? Oh, my God. Put this kilo silver 999 fine Somalian elephant. Minage is unknown. And this was 2016. That's how Somalia did it, obviously. You know, when you're talking about 32 ounces, 32.15, beautiful coin, very thick. I have this tonight. I have some gold coins. I got a lot of Schofields. And actually, what I'm going to try and do, hey, Juliet, you showed up, huh? Hey, so you lied to me about that, Matt. So, Matt, why did you tell me she was under investigation because they found parts of Romeo? Oh, I'm not playing that game with you. Uh, no, uh, we're always happy to have Juliet here. And I have a Ronnie Woods, a Ronnie Wood books. I have the last one, two, three legendary work of the late Graham Stevenson. Died June 5th, 2022 of a rare neurological disease. He was broadcast in over 70 countries with Put Some Color in Your Life. Got a lot of cool stuff. Got some great Michael Schofields, got a Zax. Oh, where should I start? I'll tell you what. We were talking about this comedian before the show. Now, I'm going to go like this, Wilson. Can you keep up with me? You sure? Can you keep up with me? Hey, is that a dog? No. <laughs> no, it is a dog. Drug sniffing? And it's just running over to Ashley? Oh, my goodness. I don't want to get Ashley any more in trouble than she already is. All right, Rosie Greer, what happened to it? All right. Norm Crosby died in 2007, was it? Or 14? You know who Norm Crosby is. He was a funny guy. Now, Norm Crosby did this drawing for charity. And it went to help the homeless folks. Now, take a look at this. This is item number BC2155. Oh, let me see that dog. Is he nice? Bring her over here. I just don't want to. I just don't want to make my dog Ginger jealous. Come here, come here. What's that? Juanita. All right, Wilson. Now, the question I should have asked you about Juanita: Had you walked her previous to me holding her? I mean, she's on national TV. If she gets a little nervous. 
I'm just going to point it towards Patty. Oh, how old is one here? Oh, I better give it back to your mother. I don't want to scare a 17-year-old poodle. She's a poodle, right? She's a poodle. 17 years old? What's 17 times 7? Well, 7 times 10 is 70. 94. Wow. She's 94 in people's years. Wow. Well, this is one of the prettiest doodles I have ever purchased. That is um, Norm Crons uh, 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 Crosby. Yeah, Norm Crosby. Uh, and he, did, he painted this February 15, 2001. Uh, and he died in 2014 or 2007. When was it? Seven. He was one of the funniest guys and he did this for charity. And this brought almost more money than any of the uh, St. Francis pieces. And look at that. He's got a piggy, and a blushing piggy, a lion. A, is that a duck? That's a duck. Ah. Uh, I'm going to auction it a little bit. Yeah, and, and, uh, give me a second on the, give, uh, the, the elephant, but I'll tell you what on this. Oh, they auctioned so much for the St. Francis uh, homeless shelter. This was the prettiest one. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And Norm Crosby is dead. I'll tell you what, this is so cheap. A lot of the pieces went for three and four and five thousand. Tell you what. $100 to open, $25 increments, and the item number is BC2155. That is the Norm Crosby. He was a funny guy. See, if I was to do anything else besides that, Patty, I'd have to blame it on Ashley. And she's already up to her neck. And, I mean, my God. How many things did they blame on you this week? Uh, Ashley? Did you get blamed for a lot of things this week? Did I? Yes. I can't Does that mean you're embarrassed to tell me or you haven't been caught yet? <laughs> um, said, uh, no. Michael said 17 times 7 is actually 119. That's what, 119. Was that you doing yeah. off the chart math, Wilson? <laughs> how, how could it be 19? 17 times 7? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not right. It's not 100. No, it's going to end with a 9 because 7 yeah. times 7 is 49. Yes, yeah, 70 plus 40. Yeah. No one's going to open. I'm one of the greatest drawings by the late comedian Norm Crosby. You got everything. You got a, a fawn, and he's raising his hands like, by me. And look at the little duck. And look at the lion. All right, I am going to take Norm Crosby back. Hang on. Can you feel it? Can you feel it, Wilson? I'm channeling Norm Crosby right now. I can't make that promise, Norm. I know you think I should make that promise. Norm is talking to me. But you see, the problem is, Norm, you're dead. So wherever you are, in a good place, or you wouldn't be talking to me so politely, if I say what you want me to say, Norm, and it doesn't work out, 
I'm going to get in trouble. And can Norm get in any more trouble, Matt? He's dead. But here's what Norm Crosby is telling me. We got the open at 100. Thank you. Norm was telling me he believes whoever buys this is going to have a lot of luck because he made this to be a lucky piece. And he's been dead since 2007. 200. 200 has been bid. Yeah, that's an original drawing by Norm Crosby. We're at 200 going once. Now, is there anything legally wrong? I don't have uh, much of a legal knowledge. If I guarantee what a dead person just told me psychically and it doesn't happen, could I get in trouble? All right, $200 going once. That's cheap. Yeah, I know it's cheap. Look at everybody's going, what? That's Norm Crosby going twice. Fair and final warning is one of the prettiest for the St. Francis charity. All in, all said, sold. Okay. I would highly recommend getting that framed. Okay. That is sold. Question. To protect the piece, I'm going to put a second piece of cardboard over it. All right. Here is... Uh, I can't mention this person's name or Patty's going to do her impersonation. Yeah. Should I say it out loud? Well, I'm going to let, I'm going to let Patty finish with that phone call. Here is the goodbye girl. You ever see the goodbye girl? This is Marcia Mason. Is she still alive? She's dead? You seem to know a lot about how, who's dead and when they died. Uh, did you know her before she died? You did what? I don't want to know about it. This Marsha Mason painted on 9-3-2001, September 3rd. She's alive. Why would you say she's dead? How old is Marsha Mason? How much? Yeah, <laughs> she's more than that. <laughs> we ain't going with dog ears anymore. I mean, I need to. She's 81. Who was she married to? Neil Simon. Who? Neil Simon. Yeah, that's why. Anyway, there is Marsha Mason drawing a heart that is, the eyes on the heart are kind of blinking, I think, or maybe that's Wilson's camera work. Are the eyes blinking, Wilson? I stare in those eyes, Wilson. Stare in those eyes. You're getting sleepy. No. All right. Uh, Marsha Mason, one of the most famous actresses. I'll tell you what. $100 to open. Once we get the open, $50 increments after that. So 100 to open, then $50. That's Marsha Mason. She's still alive. That's pretty cool, you know. She's what? Is it chapter two? Did she do like the goodbye girls or something? Wasn't she in a Clint Eastwood movie? Yes, she was. 
when they when they rescued the the people off the island of uh, at the medical school, yeah, that was Marsha Mason. She was in a Clint Eastwood movie. All right, no one's going to open for $100 on Marsha Mason. That's okay. Now, here is... Okay. One of the greatest football players... Oh my goodness. And Wilson, you don't want to mess with this guy. He could hold you upside down with one hand, me upside down with his other hand. Spent a lot of time on ABC Sports. Look at that. Do you know who that is? Rosie Greer. Is, he's dead, right? Rosie Greer? Wilson's scared to comment as I. All right. This is, I think it was part of Monday Night Football for a while. Still alive. He's 90? My goodness. And didn't he do, didn't he work with Howard Cosell on Monday Night Football with Dandy Don Meredith? 2156. That's pretty cool because he was a football player, which makes sense, Wilson. I mean, if he was a football player and he drew himself playing uh, high lie or soccer, people go, that doesn't make sense. But he was a very, did, is he in the Hall of Fame? Rosie Greer? Anyway, this is monumental, but I'll tell you what, well, I got to, I'm going to get I'm going to get beat to death on this because I paid a lot for this. This is Rosie Greer. $100 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. Start at zero. $100 increments. The Rosie Greer. I got a good show tonight. He's not in the Hall of Fame. They're going to make him die to get in the Hall of Fame. No, I, I don't know. No open on Rosie Greer. I only got a couple more of these. And then I'm going to move. He was a lineman for the LA Rams. He was a what? A lineman for the LA Rams. A lineman for the LA Rams. Okay, and he's in his 90s, all right, Rosie Greer. I am going to put you back, Rosie Greer. All right, I'm going to show you one or two more, then I'm going to move on to some other art. All right. All right, I'm going to show you this next one, but uh, while I show it, we got to keep the, I got Jerry, Jerry Cooney, a boxer, but I got one that's going to drive Patty crazy. Patty, I, th I think you can imitate this person. Are you ready for this, Patty? Come on, Chapel. Ah, SpongeBob! 
I love SpongeBob. And guess who did it? Chi Chi Rivera. She's alive. And she likes SpongeBob. Look at that. Done by Chicha Rivera. Look at that. Are you kidding? That is. And when did she do that? Uh, don't have a date on it, but it's either going to be 2001 or 2004. Look at that. That's unbelievable. Tell you what. Start at zero, $100 increments. And let me, Ashley, let me give you the one I sold, the one or two we sold. Norm Crosby is the one we sold. Look at that. Didn't, how do you say her name properly? Cheetah. 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 Didn't she the one that goes Gucci Gucci? Is that the right person? I don't know. Is it? No. Oh, you're talking about Charo. Charo, yeah, no. Uh, right. Here you go, that's gone. Alright, here's how you spell her name. This is how you spell her name, right here. It was, she drew this for Father Francis, 7th Avenue Shelter. See how they spell that? Right there. C-H-I-T-C-I -C -I Rivera. Is she still alive? And she's not coochie coochie? What's that? That's yeah, that's Charo, but what? She does what? She's the original Maria from West Side Story. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, Patty, do that one more time. I want to live in America. Do you remember that? That was her. Did they let her stay in America? And this is West Side Story? Original. And did anybody die in that? Did her boyfriend? Or was it was her boyfriend Romeo? They are you, Juliet, because you just, I don't want to. Okay. Right, I'll tell you what. Who doesn't love Spongebob? And to have someone, the original Maria in West Side Story. So how old is she now? Is she still alive? They eat healthy. No, I don't know. Matt, do you believe that? What's that? Two, one, five, four. How old is she now? Is that your guess? You're saying 90. I got her mixed up with Charo. There she Damn! That's a smart man. Did you look it up or guess? I might have seen it somewhere. You might have seen it somewhere. She's 90. All right, I'll tell you what. This is so cool. The original Maria in West Side Story. And I only have one after this, so I'll tell you what. $100 to open. $100 increments. How? If you love the theater, if you love West Side Story, this will make people crazy. I got the original Maria painted a painting. It's not of a street scene in West Side Story. 
It's SpongeBob SquarePants. And that's a very good SpongeBob SquarePants. Bright eyed, ready to go to work at the Krabby Patty. Who is SpongeBob's nemesis? No, that's his friend. Plankton. Okay, nobody? All right. I never, I, I expected, you know, but hey, I only have one left to show you. And I thank everybody. We're going to move on to some coins, some art. Okay, chapel. I'm going to put that down. So the only one I have that I haven't shown you. Don't want Marsha Mason. Don't want Rosie Greer. Don't want Cheetah Rivera. Okay. Jerry Cooney. Didn't he fight Ali? Wasn't, wasn't Jerry Cooney one of Ollie's first fights when he, I don't know. Not sure what that is. Is that a dove? Or it could be a pink version of the Grim, Grim, Grim Reaper. All right. How old, and is this guy still alive? Matt, is that guy still alive? No. No. Yeah, he, he was a boxer. Yeah. How old is he, 66? Yeah. Well, hey, who's he knocking out there? He beat somebody. Started zero, hundred dollar increments. That low, oh, there he is. Yeah, look at that. He beat Larry Holmes. They want it open on the SpongeBob. Okay, we'll pull up the SpongeBob while you think about Mr. Cooney, who did beat. Who did he buy? Beat Matt. Holmes? Okay. So this goes here. Here it is. We got a hundred dollar open on Maria from West Side Story. Look how bright his eyes are. You think he uses a lot of Visine being a celebrity? I know, but, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I watch them a lot. I know my kids, when they're growing up, they love SpongeBob. $100 has been bid. Who? She played Anita. She played Anita? Yeah, Anita, not Maya. Anita in West Side Story? Did she live to make it through the end of the... All right. All right, $100 going once. Who's got the bid, Patty? Laurie, one hundred dollars on SpongeBob, going twice. Fair final warning. All that is cheap. All in. All said. Sold. SpongeBob is gone to Laurie now. I am going back to Jerry Cooney, who painted this in two thousand and one. He beat Larry Holmes? Is that what you're telling me? Did you really read that? That's a tough thing to do. 
this off. Did you ever box much when you were a kid, Matt? I did too. I had to give it up. I broke all my fingers. You know how? Referee kept stepping on them. One, two, as they counted me out. No, I didn't. I didn't break anything. All right. Here is Jerry Cooney. He even dated it. April 5th, 2001. I'm not sure what it is. Can you tell what this is? Tell you what, his autograph is somebody knocked out Larry Holmes. Tell you what, start at zero fifty dollar increments. This is the last one I got. There he I mean, it could be a dove. I don't know. Looks like the Grim Reaper. The Boxer Reaper. Yeah, everybody expects the Green Grim Reaper to be in black. He boxed himself just like Rocky Balboa. Yeah. But you picking up what I'm putting down here, Ashley? Everybody expects the Grim Reaper to be in black and scare you. What if the Grim Reaper comes towards you in a yellow pink fuchsia? Are you going to go, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's how the Grim Reaper. No open at $50 on Jerry Cooney. Okay. Well, I just wanted to show you some of that. I have gold. I got a lot of cool stuff coming up tonight. But here is what I do hope that somebody is interested in. I am going to get to the red-headed stepchild in a minute. Yeah, I'll show it right here. Two, five, four, eight. That is the last Sasha Basari. He lost to Muhammad Ali twice. Wow. That's uh I think almost everybody lost a Muhammad Ali. <laughs> There's only a few that smoking Joe Frazier. But I'll tell you what, this I have nicknamed the red headed stepchild. I sold every single Sasha Basari I had except for this one. I even paid to have this framed. You know why I paid to have it framed, Wilson? This little kid at the orphanage, his feelings are hurt. He's been living in the orphanage, Matt, and night after night, I bring him up all of his other Basari friends sold. But this, the little red-headed stepchild, doesn't sell. Nobody cares about him, Wilson. You can relate to that. That's what caused so many of your problems in life. Is that a fair statement, Wilson? Of course Wilson's going. Look at this right here. What is the name of this piece? What? Pear. Pear? Because the, the red-headed stab kid's going to steal the pear. Going, all right, they're not going to adopt me. I'm going to spend the rest of my childhood in juvie. I can probably beat the policeman. Not beat like hurt, but in a race. Folks, as much as I'm joking around, Sasha Basari is one of the leaders in general surrealism in Russia. Uh, he is a graduate of the St. Petersburg Academy of Art uh, on 
to say, what, what was the name of that website? He is he sold in galleries in London. He sold in galleries in Florida. He sold in galleries throughout Russia. Uh, I have some comps on my Sasha Basari folder right here. Uh, and it, the, the company I am talking, Satachi Online. Yeah, they, you know, they get big bucks for him. Now, this is not a $20,000 piece because it's smaller. Definitely be a $7,500 piece, but let's find, what do you want to name the kid? Now, whoever buys it, you can name the kid whatever you want. But if you had to name him right now, Wilson, what would you name that kid? Throw out a name, Wilson. What did you say? You want to name that kid Kramer. All right, we got one vote for Kramer. I don't know. He's so sad. Look, how about Oliver? He looks like, eh? Matt, what would you name this kid? What would you say? Bobby. Bobby, the little red-headed stepchild. And I have no idea if he's a little red-headed stepchild. I made up anything about an orphanage. I have no idea what this little kid is. Who? Waldo? Who wants to do that? Michael? Yeah, M&M. M&M. M &M. I like uh, Waldo. Whoever buys it, you get to name him. Now, Ashley, remind me, what did I pay for this before I framed it? And it doesn't matter, because I'm just going to start cheap and wherever I goes for Waldo or what? I, Patty, I can't say that on TV. Can I say that, Wilson? No. Would I get in trouble for that? <laughs> I would get in trouble if I said what Patty just said, right? <laughs> well, I can't say it, but if you had a knife, what is the most common type of knife? A buck. And what is the most, what food gives you the most fiber? You put those together and that's what Patty wanted to name them. Not knife wheat, but, all right. Ashley, what did I pay for this? Because I don't care, because I'm going to sell it right now. Cute little kid. Waldo, I know. What kind of increments? This is Waldo's final appearance. It's the last Sasha Basari I have. What kind of increments would you use? Ashley, if you had to guess, what kind of increments? All right. It's going to leave a mark. Waldo, be kind to the world. I'm going to send you out in the world and stop copping the pears. If you're going to cop it, then get something of value. I mean, a pear will fit in your pocket. No, Wilson, I don't think you should go to safe cracking school. I mean, anyway, start at zero. Retail and something like this is about 7500 Uh You know, Satabi online. I'll tell you what. Start at zero, $200 increments. That is the last Sasha Basari on Russian canvas. It's an original. I have seen Sasha Basari and his ability. Look at this little kid's eyes. We've been telling stories about him all night, well, for the last 10 minutes. Look in his eyes. That's all you got to do. He knows you. 
You know him. He's talking to you right now. I wish I could buy an original Sasha Basari for 200. I can't even 800, 1,000, 2,000. I can't even touch him for that. Sasha Basari is a very, very established gentle surrealism artist that lives in St. Petersburg, Russia. I've invited him on the show, but he only likes trains. And I haven't figured that one out yet, Wilson. Now, if I was devious like Juliet, I could take him, have someone take him. Open at 300, thank you. If I was devious like Juliet, I could take Sasha Basari to the airport, tell him it's a train station. Hop onto this train, get him a seat in first class, say this is a bumpy train, better put the goggles on. No, I'm not gonna, baby. <laughs> I have a bid of 300. Ashley, did I pay anywhere ne near 300? You paid more. A lot more. Verifying. What's that? Verifying. We're verifying. Hang on, who's your customer, Matt? Uh, this is Mike. Mike? I would hate to sell a Sasha Basari for three, how much? 500 has been bid. This is Waldo. You sure? All right, thanks, Down to one bidder at 500. That's an original Sasha Basari. And take a look at this. Show him the eyes. I apologize to the bidder. I think Sasha Basari will become, already is in some circles, but legendary. What was that? All right. 500, are you kidding me? I can't buy it for 500. If you don't own a Sasha Basari, that is oil on canvas. It's called Pear. But look at him. You know that boy. Look at his eyes. Five hundred dollars. This is a lot cheaper than I thought. Going once. But I want to show you something here. Look at that European, that Russian canvas. Love the coloring. Five hundred dollars. Going reluctantly, sadly. Oh, that little kid. I'm getting mad at the little kid now. Should I get mad at that little kid? Yes. All right, you take that pair of little kid. I'm putting you in juvie. Oh, look, Matthew. You want to name him Matthew? No, I, I, I like Waldo, but let's just see if anybody can finish this auction off because... All in. We are verifying. You got a chance to help this kid stay out of juvie. In there. All in going once, twice. Fair, final warning. Is that it? Sold. All right. Now here's what I want to show you.
This is like a Viking pirate with a parrot. <laughs> five five zero. Five five zero. Hey, uh, yeah, I'd call that other guy back. It, yeah, it's never. It's had. It's been on the air. Okay. See. See. Look that last one out. Whatever happens, happens. I am moving too fast, man. All right, this is a Graham Stevenson. Graham Stevenson won the highest honor an Australian artist could get. The medal, what is it called? The what? What, what is that called? The honor. The honor of the the Australian Order. What is that? The Medal of the Australian Order. Yes. This is a very strange piece done by Graham Stevenson. You got like a Viking, a parrot, some kind of either he was starting to paint it or damage or discoloring right there. He died June 5th, 2022, of a rare neurological disorder. He was awarded the highest honor, the Order of the Medal of Australia. At one point, he was on over 70 TV stations around the world. I have only three, and that's it, Graham Stevenson's left on this planet. So I want to show them all to you. This, right here, this is the stallion, BC 609, the stallion. Take a look at that. Look at his neck, Wilson. Manes that flow backwards like ribbon. Is that a good description, Wilson? Signed by Graham Stevenson. He will be missed. And the last one. Tells you, Graham Stevenson Big fan of Darwin. He sold one of his largest pieces uh, to a billionaire. It was like the evolution of life. I think it sold for a half a million dollars. I don't know what that is. What is that, Wilson? It is BC 608. Inside the eagle. Now, folks, Graham is was very, very famous. He came on my show many times. He would always pull up on a motorcycle. He uh, was from born in Queensland, Australia. And he was actually, um, he had a lot of vocal problems, but he taught himself how to speak. 
he was partially blind and something happened and he got his vision and he could draw and everything and he became one of the greatest artists. He, uh, in, um, one of his biggest jobs was he painted the entire almanac of parrots. It was like an 1100 page book where he painted every different variety of parrot perfectly. A perfect parrot painter. How many of those have you seen, Ashley? Perfect parrot painters that plead for precision? Tell you what, I have no idea. Uh, start at zero, one iron dollar increments. I go now that he's has passed on. I go online and they want eight, nine hundred thousand for tiny little napkin sized drawings. I mean, this is the Graham Stevenson. One hundred to open. Wilson, if they made it, so you or Matt or Patty or Juliet or Ashley could get on a plane and fly to the moon, say, I don't know, a day and a half voyage, would you pay for it? Why? What would you do on the moon? It'd be fun to float around in no gravity, but you can do that on a zero gravity flight. What would you do on the moon, Wilson? I'm perplexed. Matt, what would you do on the moon? No, nah, yeah, Ashley, what would you do on the moon? You dance. Well, I would be, you got to be careful dancing on the moon. Yeah, you better tie a rope to your leg. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would hit a few golf balls. I don't even golf. I only play the real kind of golf. Nah, golf. Yeah, but I play the real kind of golf. Miniature. But I could, playing miniature golf on the moon, I could jump like four craters. Don't try that, Wilson. No one wants to open on a Graham Stevenson. All right. I give up on Graham. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's see. Whew. How many minutes till seven o'clock? Like seven. Seven? So that clock's wrong, Wilson. Is that a Greenwich mean set time clock, Wilson? No. We gotta change the time on that clock. It says five minutes to seven. We just said it was seven. No, it says five minutes to <laughs> You're off the hook, Wilson. It's my bad. <laughs> All right. Here. No, I don't do it. No, I got this. This is my new workout routine, Ashley. Are you watching this, Wilson? Oh, it's great for the biceps. 
All right, that's easy to do. All right. Hey, I could do an art show on the moon. All right, this is Zach's original done in 2023. It is Vincent Van Gogh, one of the fathers of impressionistic art. A lot of people looking back now think he, you know, he had some mental, they did not understand the type of schizophrenia and emotional malaise that he had. Uh, he would get very, very depressed. And, uh, but he, some of the greatest art you'll ever see, Starry Starry Night is one of the most famous paintings. At the Hermitage in 2014, they had three or four Van Goghs hanging there. One, they were playing this Bosch game, whatever the French play. What am I talking about, Wilson? They rolled different balls and things. And when the guard wasn't looking, I touched that painting twice. Vincent, uh, yeah, I mean, Vincent Van Gogh, I mean, how many chances, Matt, in my lifetime, am I going to get a chance in the Hermitage in Russia when guards turn away to touch a Vincent Van Gogh? Not too often. In theory, on your fingertip, you live DNA, right? I could have left my DNA. Oh, that Matisse. Oh my goodness, the, uh, what's the one where they're all holding, the dance. I touched that four times. One time so hard it moved. But folks, this is, the item number on this is, I'm sorry, uh, BC2620. This is an original collage by Zach's. Zach's has been selling like crazy. One of his pieces went in an, an auction for 10200 about a month ago. And we keep forgetting, what was the name of that auction house? Order. Say what? Yeah, I know it's in Beverly Hills, but what's the name of the auction house? That could be the first sign I'm going, Wilson. I'm losing my memory. It had a really f f famous name. Julian's. Julian's, yes. Good job, Juliet. Juliet Julian's, yes. One went for 10200 Um Ashley, what did I pay for BC2620? As collages go, Zach's did, I mean, he just went nuts on this painting. I mean, he, I mean they're going for 10,010 10 too, and you're getting one of the first paintings, first collages he did in 2023. Julian's auction house. I'm sure after the, the, the results of Julian's, Sotheby's, uh, Butterfield and Butterfield, Heritage, other places are going to start having, but they ain't going to be 10. They're going to be 40 and 50,000. And to get one this amazing, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And look at that frame. a cool frame another word with many different meanings Matt like you could say a frame to hold a painting in or Wilson could say the other night my high heel shoes on Hollywood and Sunset the cops came over I was it was a total frame up job how long did they hold you at the station 
Overnight. Solicitation. Okay. Do you ever want to, do you have a bails bondsman? By now, yeah, I have to. Yes, okay. No, I'm just talking to Wilson, the cameraman. Uh, BC 2620. I'll tell you, you got a 2022, well, you got an, well, let me just check and see what the retail is. What does it say? Fourteen thousand, and that is actually correct. Very correct. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys a deal. So well, am I now on Dish Network? Yes, Camera two. Hi, Dish Network. Great travel coming to you live at Primetime Shopping Network. That first hour is internet only, and they beat on me. Dish Network. It wasn't pretty, was it, Wilson? I was like, they had me in a headlock, and then once they got me in the headlock, they were doing the Dutch rub, you know. Oh, it got awful. Matt, have you ever heard me yell like a little baby like that? It was awful. I'm glad you're here, Dish. There is a Zach's 14000 retail. He had a painting sell for over $10,000 in L.A. in the last month at Julian's Auctions. And it was a dinky little piece. This is this is pretty cool. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this so cheap they cannot say no. Uh, if you don't own a Zax, you keep an eye on them. You got a collage and everything. I know you're thinking 8000 7, No. $1,200 to open. It's framed. You got the original cert on the back here. Look at that. Zach signed the cert, signed the painting. This is crazy. That is a Zach's original. Then he jacks it and pollocks it with the white and the green. Puts a pow in there. Like, uh, what artist is it that did the bing, bang, pow? Lichtenstein. Yes, you got everything you want in this piece. At 1,200, Matt, stop me. So, Wilson, the first time you got arrested, were you a little scared? Yeah. How long were you in for? Weekend. A weekend. Now, do you take it like a man or do you cry like a little girl in the back of the cell? Do you know what would have happened to you if you cried like a little girl in the back of the cell? Matt, you ever been arrested? I was held in detention at the Vancouver Airport Jail, but they didn't do anything to me. They just told me, don't cross that line. As they looked up why I had a warrant for my arrest in Georgia, which I didn't have a warrant for my arrest in Georgia, because it was from a parking ticket or speeding ticket I paid 20 years earlier. So once they ascertained that, they let me go. But Wilson, the funny thing was, they were pretty, they were serious about it because there was a, one other guy, and they'd sit here and there'd be a white line. And they'd say, while you're here, do not cross that right line. You can't tell a guy like me not to cross the white line. So they'd look away and I'd go like that. And they'd hear me and they'd look like, what? And I'd go, you know, I made me, will you stop that? I'm innocent. I want to see some way from my embassy. They said, what? <laughs> but anyway, they let me go an hour later once they found out I did not have a warrant from Georgia. Nobody on this at $1,200. Look how colorful that Zax is. EM Zax being sold by major auction house. One went for over $10,000 three weeks ago at Julian's Auction House 
and I can't get a $1,200 open. It's okay. I will move the piece. Tell you what, the deceased Graham Stevenson, one of the nicest pieces I have. He died June 5th, 2022, 6.09, BC 6.09, the stallion. See online since he died what drawings. These drawings were paintings he wanted to eventually do. So he put all this detail in it. They're going for 12000 online. Watch this. You want to see stupid times two? You want to cube stupid? Start at zero, $100 increments. Well, yeah, I'm cubing stupid. I'm a stupid cube. I don't know what I am. Do we have an open? This is the late Graham Stevenson. Put some color in your life. A guy that was viewed in over 70 different countries, his show. And 12,000 list price. I'm only looking for $100 to open. No open once. Cool, Graham Stevenson signature. All right, no open twice. Fair. And final, no open. On the stallion. This is down for the count. You have the open in the heaven. You got the open, Ashley? You just wanted to make me walk there and put it back, didn't you? Yes. Matt, she works for your dad and your organization. But is that a sign of being evil or just, no, good. We can't have any evil people working for us. Because I only have one exorcism left in my book of 12. I don't want to, $100 going once on a 14, 12, 14,000 dollar Graham Stevenson, who died, he won the Order of Australia, the Order of the Medal of Australia. Very few people do it. The highest civilian award an artist can get died of a neurological disease June 5th, 2022, over a year ago. $100 going once, $100 going twice. No, this is a steal. Somebody dial 911. I mean, all in. Hey, I'm doing everything I can do. If it goes for this, it's Wilson's fault. Do you know why it's your fault, Wilson? Bad karma tonight. It's not particularly. Do they want. I got the open. They want to make it 200. 200 has been bid. This is a $12,000. He's got the Order of Australia, the Medal of the Order of Australia. I'm at 200. Ashley, they want to go three. Verify. 200 going once. 200 going twice. Crazy. Sold. Okay. Is that inside the eagle? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, they, I'm just going to leave it there for now. But, oh. Um,
I'm going to show you something. Right here, actually. Ugh. Yeah, that's framed in plexi. <laughs> it's just so heavy. Is it? Yeah, see, tell me. You think that? Uh, Let me see. Yeah, be a tough mutter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is that glass? No. No, that's not heavy. It's just the frame. Yeah, yeah. You don't think that's heavy? No. Um, but I think that this is cool. Hang on. <laughs> the Mohawk. I think that's a great idea. I like it. <laughs> it looks good. The Mohawk. All right. Look who signed this book. Ronnie Wood, the guitarist for the Rolling Stones. Now, folks, I want to show you something. That book tells Ronnie Wood's story. Look at the picture on the other side, right oh, yeah. there. Him with his father, him as a little kid, his brothers. He always wanted to be an artist. Ronnie Wood, the guitarist for the Rolling Stone. He even, look at that, a signed copy of his book, Ronnie. And look, there's a picture of him up front. Uh, now, see this right here? What number is that? That would be 53 of 500. 53 of 500. Hand signed Ronnie Woods. He was selling these for $25,000 a piece. And the edition sold out at all of his different concerts. Now, Wilson, I want to explain something to you. I have comps on this piece at 12,000, I had one at 7,800, one at 8,200. This is the Ronnie Woods. Now, I was talking to Matt and Patty about this before the show. When you ask the most famous groups ever, you know, the Beatles, but they're all dead except for Paul McCarthy. Beatles. What? Ringo My bad. Paul McCarthy and Ringo. Uh, you knew that pretty fast. You're not stalking Ringo, are you? Um, Elvis is dead, but Elvis Presley. Some of the times, the Rolling Stones are prob possibly one of the five greatest, most known bands ever. And they have the lead guitarist, Ron Woods, Ronnie Woods, he debuted this piece and hand signed it. And we'll pull up the graphic. What's the title of this uh, art exhibition? He talks about his love of art, how in some tougher times, as there's his love of art, Growing up that helped him grow up. And look at that, look at that. That's, uh, I think it's a hand embellished one too. Look at all uh, the black used on the hat. This is all done by the Ronnie Wood. Yeah, list 25,000. It's the only one I got. His signed books. 1800 but to have the Ronnie Wood art exhibition this is the first one he brought out to the public and he wrote that book talking about his family the good the bad and the ugly of growing up and why he always wanted to be an artist and why he found art so enjoyable here's what I'm going to do Oh my goodness, what does it show my cost at? Ash Lee. Well, hang on, that could be a real name. Ash Lee. Ash 
Lee Smolders. Hey, that would be a good name for you, Ashley. You like it. Here's what I'm going to do, folks. Uh, you're only going to give one shot at this. Uh, I've been thinking about sending this to a major auction house, but I never like doing that. Let me go to camera two for a second, or whichever camera I'm on. I don't ever like to have somebody else compete with my customers. Yes, I'll give more money if I put in a Sotheby's or a Butterfield. That, that just ain't me. Someone's going to get a chance of a lifetime. This is one of the most famous bands of all time. They were 25000 I think, I believe he sold one original for $7 million. I mean, this is an artist. This is the Roddy Woods. It's all in his book, and the book is signed by Ronnie Wood. No, it's over there. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you guys a deal of a lifetime. Nobody else is going to give you this on TV. Please tell your friends about this show. Pull up the graphics. This is too cheap. Oh, man. When I think of Peter Max, I mean, this is too cheap. 2200 to open. That is crazy cheap. 2200 to open. On a Ronnie Wood lithograph that has been somewhat hand embellished, I believe it's hand embellished, and you get, I like how he tells his story, he goes, Ye father's yacht, and it's a broken down boat that he's sitting on with his dad. This is a heck of a book, but look at that. Ronnie Woods, enjoy 2007. You were talking about a hand-signed, hand-numbered Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stone. That's not an auto sign. That's Ronnie Wood signing it and numbering it. And you got comps at twenty-five, twenty-seven thousand. I want to open for twenty-two hundred. Oh, that is, that is, it's the only chance you're going to get. You're going to be seeing this in an auction catalog. I never compete with customers, Juliet, but I put this up. I've given them a fair chance, prime time. If it doesn't sell tonight, i got to auction it. I gave one to a girl I dated 35 years ago. Yeah, Wilson, I did. She sent me a picture of her. It's hanging in her house in Eugene, Oregon. And she goes, this is the one I always have in common. I go, okay. She loves the Rolling Stones. She used to camp out to go to the Rolling Stones. I go, really? said, you know, you can buy a video of the concert. What? Anyway, no open at 2200 Folks, I'll tell you what, get this close. Call me in the next five, ten minutes. Get me close, and you're going to own something that is very, very valuable. Has auction archives and everything. Now, folks... Should I auction the coin now? Are they waiting or is it too early? What's that? Are they watching? Am I too early? Am I, what was that term from Happy Days? Am I jumping the shark, Wilson? You ever see jump, Fonz jump? The shark when it was too unbelievable. Take a look at this. That is 
Look at that. Yeah, well, no. It all depends what part of Earth you're on. No, that. Uh, look at this. Definitely a mirrored proof finish. Look at that. The Somali elephant. Look at that. Now, Wilson, oh, look how cool that is. Look at that, Matt. Tom Hanks said I should never have gotten on the plane. But you know what he did? He got on the plane, and he didn't bring this. He could have signaled outer space with his deep mirror. What am I going to open this at, at for, Ashley? 1,000 to open. It's 32.15 ounces of pure 495. 9999. We have the $1,000 open. Looking for 1200 Folks, the minage is unknown, which scares me. At first, you think they, that's because they made so many. But in 2016, when this came out, the world coin market was in the pits. So they might have only made 100 or 200 And to actually get a Somali elephant, a proof-like deep mirror, look at that. Wilson, why did Tom Hanks not take this on castaways? Why would he have gotten on that flight? Can you explain that to Helen Hunt? No. But if he had this, look at that. You're going to signal that outer space. $1,000 is the high bid going once. Oh, that is cheap. One thousand dollars going twice. That is a I like elephants. They're very friendly. Okay, we're verifying. The trump trunk up. And this is a huge coin. Look at this. So what do they say, Ashley? You got, got a thousand. Anybody gonna make it twelve hundred? I guarantee well, I can't guarantee anything, but this would have been a probably a very low minage, knowing the people I got it from. One thousand once. 1,000 twice. Fair. This is so cheap. And final warning. All in. All said. Is that it? Sold. That is gone. Oh. I would not put this in a vending machine. All right, Ashley. No, I'm not going to throw it in. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to talk to you about something here. I am going to move my Ronnie Wood over. Here's what I want to talk to you about. I'm going to talk to you about a piece like this that I thought I sold, but it didn't go through. I, I want to talk to you about Michael Schofield, who was 76 years old. A lot of people don't know Michael Schofield. No, I don't want any glare. I'm getting glare, so I go like this. Michael Schofield, uh, his dad was in the military. He traveled around. His grandmother on his mother's side was Pahawani 
Indian. And he would visit his grandma on a reservation. He grew up in Florida, he traveled a lot in the South, but uh, he ended up traveling around and he always loved art. You know, he was in the Army, briefly, the Army, and you know what his job was? He was a cook. And as soon as he got out, he went to art college, started teaching. Adrian, I want to show 10 minutes of who Michael Schofield is. But I got a funny feeling something bigs up. So take this, watch this, I'm going to tell you the news I've been getting. Watch this. I'm Michael Schofield. I'm a, uh, an impressionist landscape artist. Landscapes are probably what I enjoy doing the most. And I think one of the reasons I enjoy doing what I do is because I enjoy being in nature. Landscapes to me speaks to, uh, speaks to who and what I am. I enjoy the outside. I love looking at different parts of the country. Every different part of the country is, is unique in its area. Landscapes are, are what I enjoy painting more than anything else. When I'm looking at the landscape, the first thing I do is to see the depth of the piece and how I'm gonna create the depth. How am I gonna create the foreground and the middle ground and the, and the background? And what it is that I'm gonna to have to do in order to jump over the hurdles it's gonna take in order to get that particular scene on, on canvas. Do I frame it right to left? Do I move these trees here? Do I? Do I bring a brook through the center of the piece? Do I bring it from left to right? You know, what's intriguing about this particular scene? Taking out all of the small details that don't make any sense and just getting the essence of the piece, that's what I do. That's what I envision when I first see the, the landscape. I think an artist's job is to interpret what the creator has laid out for us. We're just basically taking snapshots of that Interpret, putting in our own interpretation of it, our own feelings, our own emotion, and then presenting that to the viewers or to the public. That's art to me. So it really is just a, it's a statement of, of what we are and who we are, and it's translated through, in my case, landscapes. The idea of becoming an artist um, didn't really hit until high school. And it was one of those rainy days when the music instructor was filling in for the English teacher that couldn't make it to, to school. So he, um, he whipped out his watercolor um, palette and, and paints and a piece of watercolor paper and did a demonstration um, right in the class. And that was his way of filling in for, for the teacher. And well, I watched him do that, and I, could, I still remember what he painted. He painted an old railroad ties and some water in between the ties, and a couple of trees above it and reflecting in the waters. And I thought, wow, that's, I really, that's what I want to do. Your life changes quickly, you know, and, your, and the direction changes quickly. Um, and, and then I think a lot of it is just following the path. Uh, we don't choose our career, it chooses us. I think that's very true. Uh, I think as long as you keep moving, that, that career will catch up to you, or you, you'll find the right, the right spot to walk into, or the right, the right uh, position to be in at the right time. You know, the doors open, you walk through them, see, what, see what's on the other side.
I did a couple of one-man shows down in Florida. I think probably one of the more interesting one was what I did in Cleveland, a real, real wet, cold, snowy night. I really didn't think that I was going to have anybody show up for the show because it was so cold and miserable. We ended up having 1,100 people show up for the for the uh, for the event. We sold almost everything in the in the uh, the entire show, and the, the party didn't stop until about one two o'clock in the morning. And uh, those were fun. We had a lot of people show up in those in those particular in those days, all throughout Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. I did that for probably 10 years. There was a lot of shows. The most posters I think I had in one particular catalog was um, about 25. Back in the 90s, I think there was there was a few catalog companies that had uh, 10 or 15, but I think um, Editions Limited had uh, up to about 25 pieces. Interestingly enough, some of the pieces are still in catalogs dating back into the into the early 90s. And then you start to realize that you know all the millions of posters you're, you're selling happen to find their way in front of the public and. I think that's when you start to realize that uh, you're actually fairly famous in this, in this game. Well, I spent 10 years in, in Nashville, in that area. And I think a lot of the subject matter that I, that I paint today comes out of that era and out of that area. Um, Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama, Mississippi, and even upstate New York. I love that area up there. You know, big pines, the big beech trees, the big birches. I think a lot of that uh, that I do today is reminiscent of those areas and of that subject matter. I paint in California quite a bit too, um, like like today. Um, those, those areas I think are what I enjoy painting the most. One of the more difficult things is painting on location. A lot of people say, well, you got everything right in front of you. Well, you have too much in front of you. The artist has to take all of the elements, eliminate the things you don't need in the painting, and just paint the things that you do need. And you have to deal with the light changing. It changes rapidly. You're painting the shadows on one tree, and all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. So you have to take a mental snapshot of the area that you're looking at, and then paint that, because it's going to change five minutes from now. I think my paintings, they tell hope, and they tell adventure, and mystery, and romance, and I've been fortunate, really fortunate, to paint something that people really enjoy and, and feel and get uh, inspired from and fall in love with. And I like the growing aspect of becoming a better and better artist. Uh, I don't think you ever arrive as an artist. I think you're always arriving. You're eventually going to get there. I think eventually um, I'll, I'll get to a point where I feel comfortable with the work. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied completely with it. I like the idea that somebody can see one of my paintings and see a part of nature that they've been in, a place that they, they're familiar with, a scene that they know from, from childhood or some, some time in a vacation, something like that. That's when I feel like what I do actually rings home. That's important to me. They can actually relate to the landscape. So um, communication between the painter and 
the, the viewer is what's important. stuff is up with Michael Schofield. He's in the billion dollar Arm & Hammer collection. I spoke with him about three or four days ago. Some big things are up. He does not paint. I mean, he brokers art and his art's going for a ton. I wish I had more. I have seven landscapes here. I'm going to work you deals that when you see them with other places and when you see more and more auction houses handling his work, which they are and which they will continue. You're gonna, you're gonna, you, you've done very well. I hope you, th I hope you feel that way. Take a look at this. He painted this in 2004. I bought out with Ashley's up. We found a gallery that had owned a lot of Schofields closed and I worked a deal with them. Now, Wilson, look at the green, the teal and the blue. You know, snow, there's really no color for white. I mean, that's titanium white, that's, but it's the colors around it that make the white. So you look at that and you see a huge pan 2004 BC 2602 White Knights. Winter Nights. I'm thinking of White Nights, a movie with, uh, he did a lot of work with Billy Crystal. Who am I thinking about? The actor? White Nights. Gregory Hines. He died of cancer. But anyway, look at that. That green patch right there is unbelievable. All from the reflections. Stunning. This was in the gallery that, that we got these from. It was up for 37,500. I lowered the list to 25 because you put up 37,500. You go, I bought Schofield before the weather. I'm just telling you what the gallery, and it's been a while, but that's who I got it from, had it up for a ton. This is number one, Ashley. Can you hand me Michael number two? Yeah, look at this. And I am going to put this right over here. I want to I want to show you. He is one of the most famous landscape artists of all time, and he, and he's so he doesn't hold a grudge like some of his techniques how to paint the back of trees, how to create distance when, it, when you really don't have the room to do it. These are techniques that he invented. He's been painting professionally for over 50 years, almost 60 years. And look at this one right here, Lavender Reflections. And you're talking about a 30 by 40 Here's a piece that sold on Hubs Historical for $42,000 20 years ago. He was an official, he is an official or was, I don't know if he paints anymore, official PGA golf artist. He's in the Smithsonian collection. He's in the Library of Congress collection. He's in the billion dollar Arm & Hammer art collection. There's a watercolor for 18,000 on eBay. So this is Michael Schofield number two. Can you show me, bring me the boat, Das Boat. You know what Das means? Das, like the movie? Yes! 
I'm going to put this one right here. Yes. I don't want a clash. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Is this, what's the name of this? Springtime. Springtime. The boat's going, I hope it doesn't rain too much. This is what Michael Schofield does better than anybody on the planet. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar retail. And he has quit painting landscape. He's pretty much retired. He painted this in two thousand and two. They wanted twenty, thirty grand at this gallery. That is Schofield number three. Can you grab, pick whichever one? You get to pick number four. Okay. Now this, Michael was very cautious when he explains this. He spent a lot of time in Alabama, Georgia, Florida, in the South, and in the woods there, you will see a lot in the middle of nowhere rock gates and Michael at all was always told uh, that they were he, they were called slave gates because a lot of those gates were built by slaves right when we entered uh, after this long story uh, they built a lot of these gates and in the middle of nowhere whatever their owners had wanted them to then they got freedom it's like, this is my piece of the land. And they built some themselves, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's why Michael painted. He said, you will find these in Alabama. You'll find these parts of Florida. You'll fly, find these all over Mississippi. So anyway, and this is, what's the item number on this? 610. And it's a 30 by 40. Okay. What's that? Southern Majesty. Southern Majesty. I pick me the next one. Oh. <laughs> you just knocked my easel. <laughs> just gave it a little slap. You slapped my e easel. <laughs> Is that allowed, Wilson, to be an easel slapper? What are you going gonna to do next? Take a $1 bill and rubber band it to the, the leg of my easel? <laughs> the leg of your easel. All right, look at that. Now, this field of depth is unbelievable. How, what does that look like? Three acres, four acres? Look how the water right here. How he catches any residue on the water, which makes its color change off the reflections. That is a perfect Schofield. Look at that. Autumn Gate. Autumn Glow, my bad. All right. Yeah, let's go to the other one and then. I'm showing you all seven of the last landscapes. I am not getting any more. He is not painting landscapes. The only reason I got this is I bought out a gallery collection. This was painted in 05. Look at that orange. A tangerine. Look at that. This is PC 2607. Peak of fall. Now, folks, I hope you're out there. Oh, that dog, he's a good dog. The dog loves peak of fall. What's your dog's name? Juanita. Juanita, Juanita. loves this piece. She's been sitting here the whole show, pretty docile. She's a 17-year-old dog. But she, she, she's, 
I, I, I can't give it to you, Juanita. No. no, we'll take a picture and put it in your room, Juanita. All right, here comes the last oil on canvas. This is a smaller one. Two, five, six, nine. Two, five, six, nine. All right. Oh, Juanita. This is a smaller Schofield in the sense this this is two five six nine. What's the title of this? Oh, uh, colors. Twenty-four by eighteen. It's one of the smaller ones. Folks, I am going to will. I can. I watch this. I'm going to have to use some of my psychic abilities here. Beautiful beginnings. All right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. I believe, and I could be wrong, it's going to be the first request. But I showed you all seven. I'm guessing it's going to be this one. I could be wrong, and usually am. Tell me, camera two or camera one. Or, Wilson, if you got me on one and two at the same time, that would be camera three, right? One plus two. I know. I'm joking. Um, folks, give me a call. I'm going to surprise you. These are it. These are all the landscapes I'm ever going to get from them. It's going to be a long time. I didn't even get these from him. I got these through a lead by him of a school, a gallery that was closing. And uh, I got. I, I'm going to make you so happy. Just tell me. Which of these seven landscapes you want? And the, the, the people that call first, oh, Patty, I'm not just going to kiss up to them. I'm going to slobber all over them. I really am. I'm going to slobber all over them. There was a one-year little girl, one-year-old, at the dog park I go to. And she was just in her stroller. I had that girl in stitches. No, oh, I was talking to her. Uh, Myra was her name. And I was just, Myra. <laughs> and I would just do anything. And she just couldn't stop laughing. Call me. Because we're not going to be 25,000. Camera 2, it's not going to be. 20,000, 10, 15, call me. And the people that call me, call me quick. I'm going to give you deals you could not believe. These are all of the Schofield landscapes I have on this planet. I do not have another one anywhere else. These were a, a gallery closeout that I've been collecting and buying, obviously, since 2002 and 2004 and some others. But uh, keep it on me, yeah. Call me. I'm going to make you so happy. If you don't own a Michael Schofield, please get one. He is 76. He is so well known. Major auction houses now are all over his work. And he's like, dude, I'm retired. So call me. I have seven original oil on canvas by Michael Schofield of Landscapes. <laughs> he paints a lot of abstract work. He, he loves that. To get seven of these amazing monster landscapes done by legendary artist Michael Schofield, I, I don't know what else to say. Call me. It didn't have to be on this one, which I think is one of the most amazing Michael Schofield, the use of color to show that white at night. Oh, man, you're not going to believe what I got in mind. To open on these, to buy these. 
Mm. Oh, that'd be a tough choice. They are all great. This one would liven up any house. No, I'm just going to put it right here. Look at that, Wilson. Call me. Because I haven't told you what I'm going to open these for. And I can guarantee you the first two people I'm going to make so happy. This is Matt. I don't know what happens to you. Because, hey, I saw you on TV. What were you selling the other day? Uh, Disney watches or the. Uh... There was a lady with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Jade. Jade. Is Jade the lady's name or what you were selling? Okay, because I am going to make you a deal second to none. And all you got to do is call. These are original Michael Schofield. He's in the billion dollar Arm and Hammer art collection. Call me. And the first two people... I know what you're thinking. You're thinking 5,000, 4,000. Watch this. First two people, I'm going to give you deals that nobody on the planet can give you. Nobody. Adrian, how many people are watching me on the internet? And could I possibly have a negative number? 30. And we got dish. Yeah. All right. I got a price you're not going to believe. These are all the original landscapes. I'll tell you what. I am going to, uh, earlier tonight, we were talking, uh, camera two, I was talking in this crazy day and age, people talk about what they want to be known as, he, him, her, she, and Matt, what were you, Matt? What did you want to be known as? He, her, she, what'd you say? Guillermo. Guillermo. All right. Guillermo. Yeah. No. I wanted to be known as one of two things. All right. All right. Number one, Wilson, a pudgy anorexic. All right. Yes. A pudgy anorexic. And the second one was a hairy bald man. All right. I, I mean, those. Or one of the longest on TV. It's been 32 years and a few weeks. So I'll be starting my 33rd year on TV. If, folks, I got a price you're not going to believe. Pick a piece. If you have never bought a Schofield or if you bought 20 Schofield, the first two callers are going to be so happy. They're going to be, I got to put a disclaimer. If they get too happy, Matt, you got to be careful if you get too happy. My dad, who, who died about a year and a half ago, had a gay boar pedity in his office. A very abstract, weird piece. And he would never hang it on his wall, but he'd have it behind his desk. And every now and then, people in a meeting would say, hey, why do you have that painting there? And he'd show them. And he says, they go, do you ever hang it? He goes, yes, I only hang it when I think I'm getting too happy. It was so depressing. Call me. All right, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, you don't believe me. You, they don't believe me. Oh, they don't believe me. Watch this. I'm talking to some of these larger. Can you hand me? Uh, yeah, but don't fling it at me with the pin attached. And last time, just to get the record straight, I appreciate all you do, but that wasn't a pin. That was an exacto knife you threw at me. But it's all right. Well, the bleeding stopped eventually. All right, folks, 
You don't believe me. I got some of the most expensive Schofields. Oh, this is too cheap. Especially for some of the, the one done in 04 that they wanted $37,000 at the gallery. Oh, this is... Just to get the phones ringing. Now, Ashley, am I crazy at that price? He doesn't paint anymore. He, he, he quit painting landscapes. That's the number. That's supposed to be a dollar sign. Yeah. So cheap. I'm giving this to Ashley, but you got to call. I will not say it out loud. It's that cheap. Could send a carrier picture. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 37.5 in the gallery, not here. If you don't own a Michael Schofield, I have known him for 30 years. You want to get one of these. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, whoever calls and buys the first one, I'm going to throw in two of his watercolors for free. What am I doing? You know the watercolors yeah, over yeah, there? Okay, I'm, is this a solo? I got to turn my mic off? Yeah. Is it going to mentally destabilize me? <laughs> it could. It could. I got to turn my mic off. Right, Ashley. I am not going to take that well. <laughs> yes, I can cry. I'm a grown man. It used to be bad for men to cry. Then it was good. The women love to see men cry. Now they don't. Yeah, and I just made, if that, that guy is going to get the deal of his lifetime, his birthday is coming up, that couple. Yeah, and, and if that goes that price, oh my goodness. That would be a takedown of the year. And that, that's pretty much below my cost, but if they want it, make that happen. All right. I'm going to move this piece done in 04 away. And, my, and folks, you might not believe me, you're going to be seeing some Abstract Schofield, all Schofields at the auction house. He is, uh, he's retired. And he's doing all kinds of cool things. This, the reflections, autumn glow, is one of the greatest Schofields I've ever seen him paint. BC 2605. Now, say what? Yes. My daughter wants to take me to the dog park, but I'm suspicious, Wilson. You know, she's taller than me. Which one are they interested in, Patty? Uh, since we're first, gold coins. I got gold coins. 
I got lots of gold coins. There, there's gold coins there. Tell you what I'm going to do, though. On this one right here, and if you don't believe me, I should put this in an auction, which Schofield is getting a lot of pieces in. Watch this. I've never, this is one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever had. I hope you're out there. BC 2605 Autumn Glow. Oh, this hurts. This hurts, hurts, hurts. Matt, I got to do it because it's dead in here. It's like, what was that first one? Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Folks, I can't buy them for this. Neither can you. Neither can Auction House. But on this one, the one that I think is the greatest one here, one of the greatest ones, watch this. This is going to answer all the questions, Wilson. Did you ever want to know the answer to all the questions about the show in one minute or less? Well, it's going to take more than a minute, so I can't help you there. But here's what I'm going to do, Wilson. On this piece, $1,800 to open. It probably cost me more. Yeah, I just want to see if anybody's watching me. I only have seven. Ashley's selling one now, so we're going to be down to six. And, and here... At 1800, it is large, it is beautiful. Look how the shimmer of the reflections off the water. Look at that. All right. No open once. No open twice. Fair. Still working on that one, okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, I got gold coins in there. And I got some up here, Ashley. I, saw the, I know what those are. You know what these are, Wilson? They're gold coins. And they're from everywhere. Well, we have French rooster coins and Helvetia Swiss francs. All I needed was a couple British sovereigns and three nine karat gold rings, and you could be a fighter pilot over Europe. Right there. Yes, I have some pesos, gold pesos. Ashley's explaining to someone all the coins I have. All right, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I got a feeling this is not gonna go well. Patty, should I do it if I know it's not going to go well? Okay. Yes, here's what I'm thinking. The painting that Michael did not said I should put this in a Sotheby's auction. The one over here, if I start at zero, should I do it right now with no calls coming in? All right, now hang on. Let's go on here. This happened to be one of Michael's favorite paintings. He directed us to the gallery that closed. Oh, it's supposed to be like that. Here we go. Painted in 2004, BC 2602, Winter Nights. There you go. Thank you so much. Michael told me this should go in a Sotheby's auction. 
He's working with several different auction houses. He said this is one of his favorite paintings. The gallery that I bought this from uh, is out of business, but when they were in business, they had up for $37,500. He painted it in 2004. Adrian, I'm going to do something silly. Not silly, stupid. What kind of increment should I use, Patty? Michael's favorite piece, one of them. All right. You got a $37,500 Michael Schofield. Start at zero, $200 increments. I just want to, want to see if anybody's still watching or I lost my audience. Gone. Poof. Matt, there's a lesson here. 32 years of live TV, then all of a sudden, poof. Like a puff of smoke, it's gone. You know how to learn that. We have the open at 200. I got a $37,500 Michael Schofield. I'm at 200. You know who learned it the hard way, Matt? Lonesome Roads. Andy Griffith played Lonesome Road and a face in a crowd. Lonesome started from a jail cell got on TV and built a huge empire. But nobody liked them at the end. Where are they at, Ashley? Four hundred. Looking for a lot more. Folks, this is this six hundred has been bid. Folks, this is the most expensive painting. I got this from Michael Schofield from a gallery. Folks, I can't buy this for six hundred. I can't I can't get this anywhere near that, but it doesn't matter. Eight hundred. That's what your dog was whining about. Dog knew I was gonna get my behind kicked. I'm at $800 on a $37,000. If you don't own a Michael Schofield, I have sold them for $4,000, $5,000. Usually a piece like this, a square, a square piece, one this from 04, my, my, my open would have been $3,500. But it got real quiet and I made a mistake. And I am at eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Well, hang on, Wilson. Is it me, or is there something big going on tonight? Camera two. Adrian, you tell me if like a comet hit half the country, right? Yeah. I'm at $800 on the most expensive Schofield I have right now. And he, he's retired. You will not see any more landscapes from Michael Schofield. He painted this in 04. Yes, I am at 800, not 8,000. 800. 1,000 has been bid. No, oh my God. Now I'm down to one bidder again at a thousand. It's me. I'm at a thousand. Camera two. They're out to get me. That's the reason I'm paranoid, Wilson. Because everybody's out to get me, and you can tell the night. Yeah, they're getting me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> $1,000 on the most expensive Schofield I have had on this show 
in a long time. I've known Michael for 25, 30 years. And he, this was in a gallery for $37,500. $1,000 going once. One thousand going twice. <laughs> Sold. Yeah. It's gone. I'm done, Ashley. You need to look for a different gig. Just like Lonesome Roads. It's over, Matt. Can you tell? 32 years. Hell of a run. Pick something, folks. You're getting deals that I cannot believe. Did you sell any of my gold coins? Not yet. <laughs> oh, man, I'd be, I think the world's coming to an end. You're going to want some gold. It's not going to come to financially come to the end. All right. Tell you what. Which one? Which one do they want to see? Oh. No, what I want to do. Uh, no, let's see. You know, I'm uh, this, the clouds, Michael talked to me about the clouds in this piece. This is one of the oldest pieces I have. This piece was done 21 years well, it was done in 2020, in 2002, so 21 years ago. This area right here, Wilson, get lost in that area. See that? It's like a mini Aurora Borealis. It's like water on a lenticular cloud. When I was working on my pilot's license, which I never got, I got 23 hours after solo, but I never finished it. I was always worried about lenticular clouds, Wilson. They say you can fly into a lenticular cloud. It's so smooth, it looks like a lens. I mean, you can't even see it, then all of a sudden, <clears throat> your plane drops 1,500 feet. And I never saw one. I wonder if it really exists. The lenticular cloud. Folks, this was one of Michael's favorite. The gallery we bought this from, it had a sticker for $29,000 on it. Uh, this was painted by Michael in 2002. And that gallery price is 29000 Now, you got good news and bad news. Good news is they sold a lot of Michael Schofield. Bad news is they went out of business. Look at that lenticular cloud. Have you ever seen, you've seen an Aurora Borealis, yeah. And you sure you did, Wilson. It wasn't the time you, you were playing with that drug that starts with three letters. Okay. What would be a fair price to open this one up at, Ashley? They want twenty nine grand at the gallery. Thousand? Fifteen thousand? I'm not gonna get it, but I'll tell you what I will do. Hmm. I can't do it. That is, look at those clouds. That's a magical painting. The grass is as green as Ireland. You ever been there, Wilson? I stayed in the bed and breakfast in Ireland with Jennifer when we got married. I got to fly over the cliffs of Dover. It's very beautiful there. 
Most people enjoy it, except it, they fly over a lenticular cloud. <laughs> All right, folks, I'll tell you what. This is one of the nicest go fields I've ever seen. I'm going to throw you a deal of deals, 1,500 to open. $200 increments once we get the open. Is the basketball season over yet? Yeah. Basketball's over. Hockey's over. Las Vegas Golden Knights won the whole deal. So the only thing I'm competing against is baseball. Is that correct? Basketball's over. What's that? Yeah, well, I don't know. I heard that international backgammon championship got a little ugly. Yeah, the French guy smacked the Italian. He pulled out a stiletto and accidentally was going after the Italian, but he missed and got the Swede. You don't want to stab a Swede. What? <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what no one, all right, no open on that. That's it. I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, call me, folks. I'm going to move off of Schofield here in a second. I got some other stuff. I got some gold. Any calls? And I thank the folks that have bought. I am down to five original landscapes by Michael Schofield. And I thank you for that. And I'm going to hang on to them, tell you what I am going to do. Come over here. I would buy as much gold as you possibly can. You know why, Wilson? Because all hell's breaking loose. Excuse my French. Matt, you get that feeling? The Fed chief left interest rates alone, even though core PCE used to be called CPI, but they keep changing and taking things out when they go up and telling you it's legal. No, you still got a ton of inflation. You guys haven't seen anything yet. I think in a year and a half, when you see what gold's at, you're not going to be... Pick a gold coin, Ashley. Pick a coin, any coin. What country do you like the most there? You like the rooster. The French? 577? 2577, Matt. Are those all three French roosters? I'd ask you a serious question. Sorry, I yelled at you, Ashley. Ashley, what would happen? You have three, not one, not four, not two. You have three French roosters right there in a little shed. And you throw one good looking hen in. What's going to happen? I think those three French roosters, they, oh la la, they're going to fight for that woman. All right. There is, what is there in a front French rooster, like 0.1867, or is it a little more or less? Folks, buy as much gold as you can. Buy it when it's right, and it has been down. It broke 2,000, was going up, and then it got smacked down. Point what? Uh, no. Grand? No. Uh, of an ounce. Point one eight six seven. About a fifth of an ounce. Got a beautiful uh, statue on it. And Ashley, what did I pay for these? Because I'm gonna make everybody happy. I only have three left. Buy gold, please. You're gonna thank me on that.
That's about a fifth of an ounce of gold. You have three French roosters there. $479. You're getting about a fifth of an ounce of gold. You're going to need it. Folks, uh, I personally believe you're going to see one of the biggest moves ever in gold. I believe we got a worldwide bubble. And when they pop it, you know, they're going to say, I don't want currencies. Paper is currency. Gold is money. That is money. You're talking about a fifth of an ounce of gold. This was money in the late 1800s, early 1900s. $479 is their price, Adrian. $479 per rooster. And there is point what, 0.1867 of an ounce of gold. Below that, I have Helvetia Swiss francs. I got all kinds of stuff here. I am working on a collection of St. Gaudens. An MS 65 I'm trying to get. I got three roosters there. When I lived in Port Angeles, Washington, I rented a, a little house in the country and there was a rooster there when I rented it. And I had never had a rooster, so I got there and feed the rooster and everything. I mean, I just, rooster was there the whole time I was there. Then I moved away. I was so worried about that rooster. It's like, what happened to the rooster? I, go, I don't know. People are telling me. You didn't find a home for the rooster? They're like, you wanted me to find a home for a rooster? Well, where is it? Well, we left the coop open. He found a new home. What do you think happened to the rooster? Eh, there weren't a whole lot of coyotes there. There was a lot of drunk hillbillies, but not a whole lot of coyotes. <laughs> no, there were, this was Port Angeles, Washington, a great place. Uh, no takers on the French roosters. Below it are Swiss francs, 20 francs. Um, saved a lot of lives when they needed to. Those are 0.1867 of an ounce. Pure AU Swiss francs. Here's what I'm going to do. All right, folks. I am going to have a very serious auction right now. And the better part of me says. Don't do it. Ashley, can you put the Ronnie Wood up right there? Folks, I have seen comps at 22,000 on this. This is Ronnie Wood exhibition. Ronnie Wood is a guitar player, one of the original guitar players for the Rolling Stones. That is hand signed, hand numbered, and it comes with this Ronnie Wood book where he explains his journey in life and why he loves art. And he hand signed it, enjoy Ronnie 07. This edition was sold out at his shows. Most of them were sold for 25000 quite a few for more than that. This is Ronnie Wood, number 53 of 500, Ronnie Wood Art Exhibition. You can see right up here where 
It looks like he even embellished the top of it. It's an amazing deal. You get the hand sign. There's what Ronnie Woods does very well on the back of this book, Wilson. Right there. See what he's doing? He's playing the guitar. The original guitarist for the Rolling Stones. How old is Ronnie Wood now? Let me ask Siri. Siri, how old is guitarist Ronnie Wood? Ronnie Wood is 76 years old. 76 years old. Retail 30,000 plus. I am going to auction this, ladies and gentlemen. Camera two. I hope you don't beat me silly. I am uh, a grown man over 21. Way over 21. If they beat me silly, they beat me silly, right? Is that the way it works, Matt? Because I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, what do you think would happen if I started at zero? I got a $30,000 piece. Have you ever seen the Rolling Stones play, Wilson? Many times. Many times. What did tickets to the Rolling Stones But that was 70 years ago, right? Early 70s. Early 70s. Now it's like to get a good ticket, it's 2200 2500 just to get a ticket. And then they play and the concert's over and that's it. This, you have Ronnie Wood's True Love Art. You got a signed copy of his book, Ronnie. You got one of the art exhibition hand pulled by him true i think it's uh lithography that's been hand embellished oh you got everything you could ever want now ashley what kind of increment should i use if i start at zero that is a distressed face if you start at zero, maybe. folks Camera two. I've been doing this for 32 years. On uh, June 21st, I finish my 32nd year, and I start my 33rd year. What I want to tell you is this is one of the most serious auctions I've ever done. I wouldn't have done this if the show had gone a little different, a little better. I got to get some money in the till for prime time. I'm going to probably take a loss on this. My loss should be your gain. This is a very rare art exhibition, lithograph, hand signed, hand numbered by Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones. Comes with his life story in a book, though he also signed the book. 30 to 35,000 is not hard to find comps. I'm going to start at zero. What do you think, Ashley? What do you think, Patty? My only question is that or all right, I'm gonna listen to the women. They know right. Please don't hurt me too bad. Start at zero, three hundred dollar increments. This is one of the most impressive items I've ever had on TV in thirty two years. People camp out to see the Rolling Stones. And I'm starting this at zero. Never been done before. If I had put this in Butterfield, Butterfield, they would have probably had a 5,800 to 7,000 reserve, hidden reserve. I thought about sending it to Heritage, one of the world's largest auction houses, but this is the Ronnie Wood. The guitarist for the Rolling Stone.
Matt, when I started the show, I had a few people watching me, quite a few. Ask me what I did. Say, Barry, what did you do? I killed them. I bored them. I they, they, they turned the TV off. They said we would rather watch me TV and a 60-year-old get smart. No open once on a $30,000 hand-pulled, hand-embellished Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stone. You know what? I'm going to end this auction right now. You know, I'm going to take this down. I want everybody to know we give it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Auction's over. I'm taking this down. I'm taking. What? Do you have what? <laughs> they got that in in time. Do they want to bid? All right, we'll go back to the graphics. I'm going to get hurt now. We have 300. Now, folks, you are watching a guy who did an awful thing tonight, me. This is a $30,000 Ronnie Wood. We have our opening bid of 300. I am looking for 600. These sell for $30,000. Ronnie Wood gets 25,000 for these at certain Rolling Stone concerts. You get a hand signed book. This is crazy. Six hundred has been bid. This is a thirty thousand. You got nine hundred. I'm at nine hundred dollars on a thirty thousand dollar Ronnie Wood. All right. Nine hundred, please. I hold hold on. Apologize to the bidder, Matt. Who is your bidder? Lori. Lori. Do you have a pillow over there anywhere? Uh, no. I'm not going to cry into the pillow. Hang on. We got nine hundred dollars going once. Oh, Wilson, where did I go wrong in life? You know, I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in economics. I used to be an economics professor. And I quit that gig 32 years ago to sell things on TV, Wilson. I got a $35,000 hand-signed Ronnie Woods. That I opened at zero. You know why? Because I'm an idiot. And I am at $900 going once. Uh, $900 going twice. Where does Lori live? Virginia. Virginia. Will you tell all your friends if you get it how you got it so cheap? Anybody want to beat $900? You can't even get a good seat to a Rolling Stones cancer for that. And guess what, Matt? I'm dizzy <laughs> from laying down on my head. All in at $900. All said, sold to Lori. You got the deal, Lori?
Oh, I'll put you on the road as a buyer. You got the deal of a lifetime. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Ronnie Wood is gone. Okay. Now. And they get the book, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, Matt. Matt. <laughs> Shipping is 32000 <laughs> This is what Michael Schofield believes will be worth more than any of his landscapes. We put it upside down. Don't know how you can tell with an abstract piece, but this is Michael Schofield. He loves abstract. He quotes John Singer Sargent. Once you become a great landscape artist, you venture into abstract. No, Peter Max, not I'm working on them. I got to, have they bought a Michael Schofield yet? Take a look at this. This is what Michael believes will be worth more than his landscapes, even though his landscapes are in the billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. This is one of his favorite abstract pieces. Tell you what, $1,000 to open, $200 increments. Yes. Any other requests? Oh. You sell that? Yeah. Thank you. So here's the problem, Wilson. When I look into teaching college again, you know, I had an interview just for part time because I've been doing this for 32 years at Long Beach State uh, College. And I got to the final interview. It was They were down to two people, three people. One of them was me. And I didn't get the gig. And I called up after. I said, excuse me, it's been, been on TV for 32 years. I don't apply to many gigs. Why didn't I get it? They said, oh, you know, you had great, uh, great attitude, great knowledge of this. But you don't have any references that are recent. You know, I mean, all my letters are 20 years old, 15 years old. Oh, well. So I figure what I'm going to do next time is apply to the same college. And I'm going to put my name down as Dr. Gary Upchurch. <laughs> no. But anyway, no open on this. All right. Here's what I want to do. Ashley, can you take the, yeah, down. I'm going to put up the last Schofields I have. I got a little bit of time left. Call me. Let's work some deals. Susan, anybody, this has been a strange night. Not in a good way. Uh, hey, where can I put this one, Wilson? How can you show all four of these? I'll give it to Ashley. There you go. There you go. I got four landscapes left. One, two, three, four. 
What's that? That's a baby landscape. This is a boat. And in German, that'd be Das Boat, which was a huge success. It's funny because I, one of my neighbors uh, at the apartment place I lived in says something to me, and I go, is that an Australian accent? I said, no, it's a German accent. I said, oh, I should have known that. She goes, why? And I said, well, I used to live there when I was a little kid, but that was a lifetime ago. And I said, ich kann verstehen, aber ich nicht kann sprechen so gut. I said, I can understand German, but I can't speak it so well. She said, das ist gut. Not really. That's all I remember from a year of German. I know another word I learned in Germany. Do you know what fantastic is, Wilson, in German? Ausgestechnischt. Folks, take a look at these. I'm going to give you deals. Just call me. I'll lose money. If I'm going to lose money, I'm going to lose it with those viewers. I have some Jake LaMotta checks. I watched the Raging Bull today. I have some gold coins. I have... These are it. Those are the last... Uh, these four, and I got one smaller, Michael Schofield. That's it. Call me. Tell me which one you want. I got 16 minutes left. You know what we need to have happen here tonight, Wilson? We need somebody like Simon Cowell to come walking in. Barry, that was an absolutely pitiful performance tonight. I know what you're capable of, and tonight was just shameful, embarrassing. Well, Simon, tell me what you really think. You don't want to know. I want to know. You don't want to. So call me. I got an idea. The oh. These are legendary artist Michael Schofield. Hub's historical. He's in the billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. He's a PC he was a PC P, PCGS golf not PC. What is it? What is it? What is it? What they used to call the golf league? PGA. PGA. Yeah. I got a deal. Camera two. Somebody wants two Michael Schofields. Pick and call me. Make an offer. I got 13 minutes. 13 minutes of hard luck minute. Yeah. Take a look at this. Now Wilson doesn't even want to take me in as an uh, intern, as a night walker, street walker now. Two off and on, is that what it is? Yeah. This bud's for you, Barry. <laughs> It's day of Mountain Dew. All right. Pick two. Make me an offer. I don't know if Melvin's watching. Hey, did, did we tell him we got all this big, big, big cart out going out to him? Yes, I can. All right. Melvin, I have these. They're yours. Not even a fair price. I just want to sell him before Simon Cow comes in here and makes me cry. He's not going to make me cry. 
That would be funny if somebody pulled out a pair of nunchucks or something. <laughs> Jolie. No, I've been trying. I, I've been looking. The Jolie market has weakened lately, and I'm trying to put together a deal where I can get three Dale Jolies. Uh, Seattle glass artist gave an eye to glass. Uh, but I am looking. Does Melvin see anything of these four I have right here, Ashley? Tell Melvin he cannot offend me. Look at them. They are gorgeous. They were part of a huge gallery I bought out. Many of these were priced at twenty-five and 30000 Pick a Schofield, Melvin, or Barbara. Mr. W. Randy. Randy. These are the last go fields. Give it a few more minutes. Got some gold. And I apologize if I have not brought the, the A game. I thought I did. I got some really cool gold coins that didn't make it for a night show. St. Gaudens, 10 Indians, stuff like that. I, I hear a text. What's my? Who is asking? Mr. M, if you come up $150, it's yours. It's got a beautiful frame. I'm actually selling it at a loss, but I want to thank you for calling me in when I have 11 minutes left. They pummeled me tonight, Matt. It wasn't even a fair fight. It's like I got a sunny list in count right when I walked out. <laughs> uh, what does he say, Ashley? Is that a yes? These are large Schofields. I got a deal for Melvin or Barbara, Mr. W. All you got to do is call. And it's a toll free number. Happy birthday to David. Can you say happy birthday to David? It's David's birthday? Happy birthday, birthday David. David, happy birthday. What? Where, where does David live? Add 50 bucks to his offer, and it's his. And I thank you. If I'm going to lose money, I want to lose the money to the birthday boy. You know what I have to say about that, Wilson? We're born into this world all alone. We're born and we die, and the time in between can get so very hard. So let's be friends. A guy named Bill Wilson wrote that song. And Which one's Autumn Glow? This one? That one? 
Probably. Where's he at on that? Can come up 200 more. Can come up 200 more. He's getting deals of a lifetime. He come up to Yes. I'm giving him the hard luck number for the hard luck show. What should I do for a living now, Patty? David says thank you very. He really appreciates. Did he take it? Which one did he take? Thank you. Was that David? Hang on. Ashley, who just thanked you? David, thank you. Thank you, David. The birthday boy. He bought the Graham Stevenson. All right, Juliet. All right, you passed you pass it over to Ashley. All right. So I don't mean to pry, Juliet. I had no idea you have such a nice dog that's 17 years old. It's your life. But I did have one question, only one. I'm going to be very, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make this so careful. I know your dog. I'm not going to upset your dog. So about two weeks ago, they took the electronic tracking bracelet off of you. Did you really have that on for three years? And what happens if you take a bath or a shower with the electronic tracking bracelet on? Well, you can't take it off before a shower. <laughs> oh. All right, folks. Which one is he interested in? Okay, so I think this is going to be gone, and we're going to be down to three. Oh my goodness, Matt, have you been in the ring where they beat on you this bad? I thought this was going to be a good show, but Wilson, I came here just being friendly. You know what they did? They put on brass knuckles. They said, is that Barry? Poof, 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 poof. But I thank you anyway. Oh, I got five or six minutes left. Oh, Juliet. I, Ginger really likes, and I'm very careful what I feed her most of the time, but it's not often, but like once every 10 or 12 days, I give her the, some cheese and pepperoni off a of pizza. Is that okay? Okay. You give her cheese? All right. Folks, I am down to three. Michael Schofields, and I thank you. I have some gold coins. Watch what the next year brings. Give those Swiss francs, 20 francs from the early 1900s, late 1800s. These right there. Give them some th thought. They truly save people's lives. It's funny, they'll buy about now what they bought in 1912. I mean, though, you know, gold's going, going to go ballistic. That's my opinion. Yeah, gold is way too cheap for where this world is. And I think we're going to end up back in a, in a global gold standard. I really do. I got six, no, three minutes. So, 
I'm down to a couple Graham Stevenson, a couple Schofields, plenty of gold coins. <laughs> oh. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. Now, when you were down and out, all right, and you, and you told me, and I, I don't want to breach your trust, but which of the homeless shelters around here took the best care of you? Really? You weren't scared in the Hollywood shelter? Because, I mean, I'm going to be out on the street pretty soon with numbers like I'm doing here. Can you bring a dog to a shelter? Julie, I can't bring Ginger to the shelter. So I got to become homeless on the street like Wilson was? Matt, have you ever lived on the street? Slept in your car. Ben, for a month, did it in Arizona in a tent. And he, he actually went to work the next day. He just would sleep in a tent. Eh. And he said, you won't believe how cheap I got by dad. Can you show me how? How many minutes do I have? Twee. Twee minutes. Oh, well, thank you, folks. I'm going to have MS64, MS65, $20 St. Gaudens next week. I thought that some of them would show up this week. I have um, a really tough day gold coin that I've been waiting to get in. And I want to thank you. And any last calls? Does Melvin see anything he wants? Mr. W, Mr. M, Mr. S? Thank you. So they don't allow dogs in the shelter? Well, I got to, uh, so I'm going to be on the street with Ginger? She's a useless guard dog. She's scared of everything. She ran from a cat named Tucker. My dog ran from a little cat named Tucker. I'm not making this up, Wilson. Ginger walked up. Tucker put her nose out and Ginger ran away. Two minutes. Anybody, call me if you want to make a deal on one Schofield, two Schofield, three Schofields. That is all of the, take a look at this. That is all of the, the last three landscapes I have on this planet. Four. I got a smaller one I didn't even show tonight. But the boat, you will, oh, look at that lenticular cloud. Call me. This is the Michael John Schofield. It's in the billion dollar Harm and Hammer collection. He painted for Stephen J. Canals production. Well, I thank you. Those are original oil on canvas. One minute. All right. Folks, thank you. I, I don't feel I've given you a good show tonight. I have been waiting on some merchandise. I'm going to have it all in next week. I thank you. You got deals of a lifetime. Uh, Laura, whoever got that, unbelievable. Uh, Ronnie Woods piece, that cheap. Hey, I love you. Buford, don't kick the dog. Buford, I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to get you, Buford. I'm going to get you. What's that? Who loves my show? Who? Mr. S. Mr. S. Hi, Mr. S. See you later. <laughs>